In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make an object float on water, like this tube is floating, and we'll use the ocean modifier, along with few other settings in Blender to create this. It's actually very easy. Let us first start with a blank new file. We'll convert this default cube into an ocean. So go to the modifiers tab and add one ocean modifier. We have discussed all these settings and details in our previous tutorial on ocean modifier, so we won't repeat them here. You can check the link given in the video description for our detailed tutorial on ocean modifier. Let us change these resolution values to 12. Then expand this wave section. Change the scale, maybe to 3. And also change this alignment to 0.5. Then for the animation part, we'll insert a keyframe for this time value for frame 1. Let us then increase the scene length to say 1000. And go to the end of the animation. We'll change this time value to say 30. And keyframe this as well. Now if we play the animation, we'll see that our ocean is ready. The waves are playing on the ocean surface, as expected. So our step 1 is done. Now we'll create a guiding plane on this water. Let us go to the add menu and add one plane. We'll first give a name to this cube. Let's say we call it ocean. We'll hide it for now. And we can make this plane little bigger as well. So maybe we can enlarge it by a factor of 3. Then go to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. Switch over to the simple option. Increase the levels to 3 or 4, and then apply this modifier. In the wireframe view mode, you can see that we have got so many sections created for this guiding plane. Now, we have to go to the edit mode. While all the vertex points are selected for this plane, go to this, Object Data Properties tab. Click on this plus button to create a vertex group in this list. Then click on the Assign button, so all these vertex points will be grouped under this vertex group. Back to the object mode. Let us bring back our ocean. Then while the plane is selected, go to the modifiers tab and add one shrink wrap modifier. In the target field, select the ocean. All other default values are good. Now if you play the animation, you'll see that the plane is taking the form of the ocean water, moving up and down nicely with the waveform. This is the basic setup to make any object float on the ocean surface, using this plane as the guiding plane for the floating operation. Now, we'll add some other object, which we want to float on this ocean by mirroring the real-time movement of our guiding plane, and it's going to be very interesting. So let us go to the Add menu and add one torus object. We will make it little bigger in size. Let us enlarge it by a factor of 5. The relation between the size of this floating object and the size of our guiding plane is very important. For better results, it should have a smaller size than the object which we want to float. But if it is too small, the floating object will show very unstable or erratic movement. So resize the guiding plane, maybe little smaller or little bigger, as it needs. Now for the torus, go to this object constraint tab and add one copy location constraint. In the target field, select the guiding plane and in the vertex group, select the vertex group that we have just created. As a result, the torus will now follow the same location of the guiding plane, so it will float on the ocean surface. Let us minimize this and add one copy rotation constraint. Similarly in the target field, select the plane, and in the vertex group, select our vertex group. Now if you play the animation, you'll notice a tilting effect on the torus as it floats. It is following both the location and the rotation of the guiding plane, and the floating looks very realistic with this. This is how you can easily make any object float on ocean water. So our basic setup is done, we'll now add some suitable materials for our objects. Let us first turn on the rendered view mode, and we'll enable the HDRI lighting as well. Now select the ocean, and go to the materials tab. We'll change its base color, to some shade of blue for water. Then scroll down below. We need to increase this transmission value all the way up to 1. So we get a transparent ocean. Now select the torus and create a new material. Let us give it a darker shade by reducing this value field just like a real tube. We can add more subdivisions to this for a very smooth surface. So let us add a subdivision surface modifier and increase the levels to 2. We can now hide the guiding plane, so that it does not get visible. 
If we play the animation, we'll see that our tube is nicely floating on the ocean water. Everything looks good, so the floating part is done. Next, we'll discuss how to add some motion to the floating object. Like what if we want the tube to drift away, along with these waves? So, select the ocean, and in the Modifiers tab, we'll enlarge the ocean by changing this repeat x value to 2. It will make the ocean longer in the x dimension. The ocean waves are moving from this end to this end, in this direction, so our floating object should also move this way. Let us unhide the guiding plane and select it. We cannot move the floating object directly. We have to move the guiding plane, and the floating object will also move. This is the start position, so we have to keyframe its location value. Then go to the end of the animation, change the location of the guiding plane, in the direction of the wave, and finally, keyframe this as well. We are done, now we can hide the plane again. Let us go to the start, and play the animation. So you'll see that the torus is now slowly moving in the direction of the wind. This is quite slow because we're in the viewport, but the actual render will be fast. In fact, you might have to slow it down even further, to produce a realistic ocean and a realistic movement, so play with it for whatever output you like. The more you experiment with something, the more you discover. So this way you can create floating objects using the ocean modifier. And let me remind you that your output may be quite different, or the floating may be jittery, if the size of your guiding plane is not set correctly, compared to the size of your floating object, so please take care of that. That's all for today. I hope you like this tutorial on floating objects. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.